Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the show. And today we have a very, very special guest indeed. We are joined by William Miller. You guys will know him more recently as Adriel in Warrior Nun, but also some of you may know him as Paxton McCreary from The 100. William, how are you today? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on the show and a big hello to everyone out there. You know, it's um, as we were sort of briefly talking off camera, it's really amazing uh, the reception that Warrior Nun is having. Um, when you first started the show, did you anticipate it to get the reception it had? Uh, I, I kind of, I don't know, I gave up anticipating anything quite early on in my career because I, I did some I did some really good projects that for some reason never, never took off. And then I did some awful stuff that unfortunately, unfortunately did <laughs> and, and stayed in the collective mind of, of, of the viewing audience. Um, I didn't know what to think of this show. I think we all had hopes. Um, you know, when, when I first heard of the show and they, um, I actually came on board this this show because one of the writers had been on the 100 on season five and, and she just worked with me and, and and they were looking for a villain for, for Warrior Nun and she she suggested me and uh, and it Simon and I, and I just clicked immediately and, and it went it, it went really well. But um, I suddenly when I did hear they want you for something called Warrior Nun, I was like, what what? <laughs> There's a show. <laughs> called warrior nun and what's it about well it's about nuns who nuns with guns and and, and you know go on killing sprees and, and what's it and i was like um okay so i i had to give it a read because i did know who simon barry was and uh you know obviously that's that's a that's a big green flag um so i went through the material and amazingly there was there was there was a lot there that that had to do with uh, politics, uh, with philosophy, with with uh, questioning what what uh, heaven and earth is, and a lot of sci-fi, which I love. I'm a big fan of sci-fi. I always have been, and um, I just I was enthralled by it. Uh, obviously, I I knew what the what what the target was. I knew I knew what kind of show we were doing, but the fact that we were going to be filming it here, and the fact that there were there were several actors. Uh, included in the cast um tristan who I, i've worked with on many occasions tristan you are um i've worked with him on many occasions movies uh tv series joaquin dalmeida who i've i've admired for a very long time sylvia fanti like european actors that mm -hmm. that i've coincided with in the, in the past uh, you know 25 years of my career it was kind of a guarantee and the fact that the team that was set up behind it you know the Embassy VFX, they're, they're a renowned VFX uh, company. Um, having them involved was also a, a big green flag and, and mainly Simon Barry, you know, bringing us aboard and bringing me aboard. And, and then when we started filming, it was just like, well, this is certainly different. Uh, I knew the stunt team, I've worked with them many, many years and I knew they were gonna make it look good too when it came to the fights. Uh, I knew the people in the costume department. So it was all clicking together in a way that I thought, well, it's not gonna be bad. And the writing's, the writing's good. So you just cross your fingers and hope. Once we did it, you know, I, I knew we'd, we'd done something different. Um, I, I hadn't seen anything fit together. Um, season one came out when I was in LA. I got stuck there uh, during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and I was kind of, well, what I, I'm, I'm always like this, uh, show comes out first, first few days, I can't sleep because yeah. uh, A, I hate watching myself and B, I just cringe because I know there's so, there's, there's so many, there's so many emotions and there's so many people behind these projects that you just wish it's going to go well because you wish them the best because they become your family for a few months. And um, you just hope. And that first season came out and suddenly Simon called us and all up and he said, well, it looks like we've made a smash hit. That I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting to go to go badly, but I, I definitely wasn't expecting the, 
the reaction we had and uh so it kind of upped the game for season two because we didn't know like i knew season two was was going to be better mainly because i was a bit no no <laughs> um, <laughs> no because it, 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 it's so much more fast paced we we, yeah. we move we move beyond getting to know the characters so we can play uh you know we can start playing the board and um it, it just gets bigger um we got a lot more confidence from from, from the platform from netflix uh, not that they haven't always let their creators do what they want to do because uh, in my experience every time i have worked with netflix, with netflix there's a lot of freedom of movement um but you know we had david hader uh, along with with the with the team this year and simon was simon was very excited for it we had chris lavaser back uh winston Helgerson from VFX uh, was was back on board. It, it was a it was a tight team. Uh, leaving COVID out of the equation because that made it all very difficult for everyone, uh, as as for any that was going on at the time. Everything just ran smoothly, and um, I could only hope. I knew that the fan base, um, and I know that they are praying for for more, and and they're praying for us to rise within the charts and whatever it be uh we can never really um think about that we you know we we just do our jobs and deliver the material and just hope we've done something that will make people happy mm -hmm. i am I, I i'm i'm extremely pleased with the way it's going i think we've um the fact that, that there's been so much time between season one and season two i think it's been positive for the show in a way because i think we we actually amplified that fan base we had, and it it, it is a very very committed fan base. I, yes. <laughs> I I think I've only been on one other show that had such a such a radical, uh, radically invested fan base as this one. Um, and and there's a lot of people out there that have their hearts put into this, and and it's 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 humbling. It, it really is, and and it's exciting every time. A few times you do on, go on social media. I'm not a very a very social media orientated person, but on this show I have been because I kind of like <laughs> fall down sometimes with fans, especially with th with things like this that they're not getting a head to head with uh, with with the actors or the creators because of the nature of 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 what platform shows are. Um, everything's so so speedy. Everything's done. Uh, with such acceleration it's like you you just shove the show out there there it goes there it, there it's seen there it disappears and you hope you get another season and when you've got fans that are so invested in the show you know you just want to give them that extra something that you're not being able to to give them like like back in the i'm going to say the old days which makes me sound <laughs> quite quite a bit of an oldie <laughs> but you used to get interviews you know you used to give them that little bit extra that only seems to happen nowadays if, if you're doing a Marvel or a DC movie, um, yeah. which is just sad because you know I'm not one to to want people to get to know me too much because um, I'm a character actor, so I always feel that's a bit of a negative uh, in mm -hmm. that sense. But I feel it is it is nice for people to know how think how the show they loved was, was done, or people that are interested in the in the industry, um, like maybe how someone works as for do, for making characters or or what it's like on set you know the nuances that that you never get to perceive if it's not with uh behind the scene photographs in this occasion right you know that's that's exactly it you know and that's funnily enough when you speak about that that's one of the big things that when i first started all of this with interviews with movies or tv shows um i always ask like the public in general if you could speak to anyone from any show you know what would you like to ask them what kind of shows would you like to get interviews from um, and especially since the release of season two from warrior nun it has been non-stop requests from warrior nun um honestly the fan base for warrior nun is as you I, said it's so I, strong am i the first or last of the cast to be interviewed ah <laughs> uh, you're the first for me you always be the first oh. for me <laughs> but honestly it's um <laughs> Honestly, the you know, sci-fi is again as 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 you mentioned for yourself, sci-fi is such a big, uh, a big fan of mine. I love sci-fi, and I've always wanted to get sci-fi guests on. But you know, I I get it, I get requests from other shows, but Warrior Nun, I've never seen such uh, 
a push to try and get anyone from the show because people, like you said before, they are so invested in it. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Like it's it, it's it's really nice for me to hear because as, as I said, I don't interact on social media, media that much. So mm-hmm. so this is as good as it is for me as it is for you because because for somebody like you who actually um, you know interviews people that that have to do with these shows to say that you 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 haven't had a push like this in in never in, well that you know was really it's really yeah. damn good. um and and when you kind of talk about the show and you know i definitely think the title when you first when you've never seen it right the title warrior nun it it drags you in it makes you makes you think it makes you think what could they possibly do with this show um you know and what you like like it's kind of like i mean if i hadn't been on the show and i hadn't seen it i hadn't read it and i suddenly saw it come up on my netflix screen i i i i'd think are they really doing anything is this <laughs> anything goes but yeah. of course, then you then you you know you, you check out the background especially if you have to do the show yourself you check out in the background you realize that it's actually based on a comic book and you know it was it was actually presented to the to the platform uh at a time when they were they were looking for things like this and uh i don't know if they really knew uh, what kind of show was it was going to be um mm-hmm. they hit the jackpot because it came with the right person um you know simon his simon is is like a midas you know he he's he just everything that i've seen him do uh, he has that magic touch, and it came with the right person. Um, it it went with a platform that allowed it to be the show it is. Um, and yeah. you know, I, I think it's I think it's something magic. It's something that you know, it's, in years to come, we'll look back on our careers. Anybody who's been involved in it would say, "I did Warrior Nun," yes. <laughs> and maybe <laughs> maybe people will still remember it. Or if they don't, they'll be like, "You did something called Warrior Nun," and you'll be like. <laughs> No, to be honest, I th- I think it I think it will become one of those that I think in you know, maybe 10, 15 years, you know, people will be like, oh, do you remember that show Warrior Nun? And then they no. want to like rewatch it back and they want to see it back and they want to memorize it. And I think with season one, as you mentioned, it did such an incredible job with laying the foundation for the characters, what the show is about, um, the direction they want to go. Uh, you know, and I think that got the fans invested. And as you said, for season two, you had to me full reins to kind of go whichever way you wanted to go. Um, and that's why I think so far it's been so heavily well received. Yeah, I, I mean, season one, um, watching watching through season one, I, I was I did fear a bit because um, to get to know these characters, you need you need to to push on the brakes, like the pace. Mm-hmm. The pace was necessary, and I know it was slow during the first episodes. But I always, I, you know, I I don't usually recommend things that I do to anyone because I'm like, well, you know, if you want to watch, it, I'm not, I'm not going to make you like not even my family. So my parents are like, let's go and watch <laughs> William. Let's sit down and watch Warrior Nun. And I'll be like, no, Mom, <laughs> watch the old man with Jeff Bridges. <laughs> I don't know if, if this is your cup of tea. But then they do, and it's fun, you know, watching stuff with your family. I'm that cringing at everything I do, but. <laughs> Um, you know, that pace was necessary and we were very lucky to have Alba um, because she's so charismatic. She, she just holds the screen, the screen. She's, she's so, she's such a joy to, to, to watch and look at. And then Christina, you know, these young actresses that are, that are up and coming and they're so talented and they held their own and they made it interesting even during the, the slow parts. And, and as, as from episode five, it just picks up and it's a roller coaster. And we knew that season two, if we get through those five first episodes, and anybody who does, they're going to keep watching it. And there have been people that have, that have said, just get through those first four because you know you want the action; it'll, it'll come. But those first four are interesting too because you're creating the background. But season two is just like full blown um, yeah. nuns and guns and, and, and <laughs> nunjitsu. You know, and, one, and... one of the things uh, that, to be honest, really took me by surprise, even as I was progressing through the show, it's a lot more, I don't want to say gory, but I want to say like violent, right? Like the, it's a lot more violent than I anticipated. Um, you know, I remember there's a particular scene with um, with Adriel where 
uh, sort of the nuns have attacked him and taken him down, and then they fire a bolt into the back of his head. Yeah. Um, and I was like, holy crap, <laughs> this is a lot more, more violent. Olivia, Olivia Declan actually spat on me too, which is, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, but that's the thing, you know, I, I mean, you got, you got a, a team of, a team of people, you got Simon Barry, you got Chris, our DP, uh, we, we had uh, on VFX first season, we had Neil there. We had Winston Helderson from uh, Embassy VFX. And these are people that have, you know, not only done Lost in Space, they did like the first, uh, the Mac one Iron Man suit. The, the, they've done Chappie. They've done, they, they've done a series of things. These people, um, they, they do VFX because they like to figure out how things that don't exist would actually work. So they're very real. And if they're going to do something bloody and gory, they go all the way. They do one hundred percent. They don't. They don't. They don't just half ass shit. And that's that's what I think makes the show great. You know, there's a scene. There's a scene in season two where uh, Lorena, uh, Sister Lita, she she starts slicing limbs off people, and in, in, in an incredible one shot. And and it's it's one of the bloodiest things I've seen in a while. And I was like shit we got kids watching this but then then i was like this is great it's great it's fine you know these kids are playing video games too i, I don't know it's it's kind of dark so you don't get to see it all uh you know uh too too much in close-up but um but i think that's what makes the the, the show fun too you know you don't want to you don't want to do you don't want to a team it which is what i call it sometimes yeah. if you remember that show the a team that's, that's kind of Round about my when I was growing up, you'd always see you'd always see them like hit a car with a missile or or a bazooka and and it will blow up in the air. But you always got the shock of the guys coming out of the car afterwards because you couldn't kill people on television. I think on that show, there was only one guy that got killed the once, and like his car fell into the water and they they just the camera stayed on the water and, and until it stopped bubbling because you needed to know that that guy was dead. But that was the only time, the only time they killed someone on the A team, on the old one. Um, but this, but you know, this is this is twenty twenty three. It's the time where we have Donald Trump and Boris Johnson and uh, and Vladimir Putin, and it's it's a different world, isn't it? You know, completely different world. The violence again, but you know, I. I it's not the part of the show that I like the most. Um, I think if you're mm -hmm. going to do it, just do it, do it full throttle. Um, there's other yeah. things that really interest me, interest me in this in this season, which was you know, uh, Adriel's philosophy or where what what is really behind what he wants to do and why. You know, there's, there's been a lot of questions of, about that, and and I mm -hmm. I found it I found it very enthralling to to go into, and I had a lot of conversations with uh, Simon to be like what I'm actually, what I'm actually looking for, what, what is it I want to achieve? Um, and sometimes we knew and sometimes we didn't. It was just like, just make it fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's something I wanted to talk about. So obviously uh, the show has a lot of deep, complex characters, but for me personally, Adriel is, I think probably the most complex um, and, and a very, I'd say unique character um, for you. What was it like playing a character like that? I, um, when I started my career 25 years ago, um, I never wanted to be a leading man. Uh, and I remember getting myself into trouble with that because, uh, some people sent me to see some agents to take me on and they were like, so what do you want? I was like, I, I'm not a leading man. I don't want to be a leading man. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were like, but that's what you want. And I said, no, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I want to be a character actor. That's what I want to be. I want to be a supporting role. Um, they're like, why? I said, because if you're a leading man, people have to have empathy with you. They, 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 they're cheering you on and they need to, they need to believe you. They need to recognize you. And, and you end up doing the same thing every time over and over again, because production can't afford you to not be likable and relatable mm -hmm. and people to, to, to back you up. And so I always felt the acting uh, and the freedom of movement within within character fell on 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 those other those other ones the the supporting roles and the the character roles and within those I always found the villains to be the most interesting because the villains are, are damaged damaged people 
you know, the 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 people that have that have been through trauma or the people that see the world in a different way. And they're people that that have vices, they're people that, that can't deal with those vices, or that they, as I said, just damaged. And and I've I've always been a a, a big fan of psychology um, since I was a kid. You know, I, I, uh, it was a career I almost pursued. I ended up doing history and archaeology, but that kind of within history and archaeology, I always had a strong interest in in the evolution of the human mind. Um, and villains have always been, I've always obsessed over them. And, uh, you know, when you get a good one, uh, depending on how it's written, and this has happened to me on several occasions, uh, some people sometimes say a villain is great. You know, you've got to show the human side. And that is true if you've got the time to do so um when i don't have the time to do so i want to do something that's going to deliver things in in a way that is going to be fun for the audience i you know i i'm i'm the kind of actor that i don't mind sacrificing myself and being the guy that people hate so they can love their heroes even more because i think that's the that's the that's a a, a beautiful message of love to the to the work you know you want people to have yeah. fun with this, and if the, if they gotta love their hero, they're gonna love him even more. If this guy, if this guy is even worse, you know. <laughs> and I've seen I've seen people like you know actors that I that I really admire. Uh, amongst them, Gary Oldman, who's done amazing villains sometimes. And the fun the fun of villains he's done are the ones that are black. Not to say that Adriel Adriel is black, but I did play him a bit more black than gray because I I didn't think we'd have time. And and it would have been a bit boring if I had made him a bit grayer. Um, there is he's not wrong in everything he says. I I don't think he's wrong in everything he says. I think that what he's trying to do is actually necessary. The problem is he comes along. He comes across as being a bit of a dick because <laughs> there's there's an aspect of humanity to him. You know, you've been locked away for this long. You want to enjoy life too. Like he's not a being um so he has his flaws he's a flawed character he has his vices that's why we see him drinking in every scene <laughs> um and the few vices he has actually lose they get they, they they make him lose basically in the end because uh if he hadn't had them and if he if he were a bit more forthcoming with information but the problem is that I, I I relate to Warren on the way I relate sometimes, or to Adriel the way I relate to you know. Let's let's talk about a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. For me, that is everything uh, in this story. What is the value of one dimension or of one planet in comparison to what we could lose if we don't make this one expendable? Like, what is the bigger goal? What is what is what is the bigger defeat? Uh, that's why I, I I don't think he's lying when he says, and and I tried to be as truthful as I could with that last line, saying you know, if if I don't succeed in this, it will fall on you to stop her. You know, believe it or not, we're on the same side, and and, and I do think he's sincere when he says that. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's interesting to see where it's going to go because I think we are going to make that big reveal, you know, that, well, I'm sorry, Earth is in the middle of this galactic highway and we need to get these soldiers from one place to the other. And if we don't go through this planet, um, we're going to lose a war that could cost the lives of, of trillions. Um, I'm not saying that's what it is, but I, I, I do gather that, that I have a feeling that there's something like that behind us. You know, what is the greater good? What is the greater evil? Yeah, and, and that's that's one thing I, I I firmly believe that the the demographic for the the show is so varied because there's so many different layers to it. You can love it just for what it is and what you're watching, but the the philosophy behind the show and the the direction it could go, I think, is what really captures people to 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 stick around and to. Um, that that really brings them to be like almost relatable in in a lot of ways um 
think, yeah, I, I think that today's society is exposed to such uh, an amount of, of information and different opinions that um, I do like the fact that we've been able to do something that quite, that not, not too long ago probably would have been a lot harder to do, which is, which is question uh, religion and faith in, in, in the way we have. I know there's a lot of countries we, we, we wouldn't, we would be completely sensitive. Yeah. And uh, and I do like the way that because I've I've always I've always thought that you know whatever religion you, you're you're a part of uh, faith is an important thing uh, and whatever you believe in be it be it in, in in a god or nature or whatever but it's an important thing and there is power in faith and that's that's what I really like about the sci-fi aspect of the show you know there is power mm-hmm. in faith but there's actually real real power in faith. Yeah. Um, but with some leaders, and we've seen this in our own world, you know, there was a comedian the other day talking about, you know, well, we got Donald Trump is running for elections again. Um, and people thought it would never happen. But of course, why does this, why does a man like that have such an immense follower? And right. in a way, I, 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 there, is, there is a certain comparison there with characters like Adriel. A comedian the other day said, this man came out and said, the system is corrupt. And they said to him, well, how do you know? And he said, well, because I use it. He was honest in his delivery. And they said, well, okay, well, then you're going to have to show us your taxes. And then he was like, well, you're going to have to show us your taxes. And that nobody wanted to because they were both lying. They both used the system. The system is corrupt. And this is the man that came out of the White House and said, everything we're doing in there, uh is everything you think we're doing in there so i'm gonna go back in now and keep doing it so he's like yes this is all evil it's bad um but this is what it is this is mm-hmm. the way it is so he exposes something that he's using himself um but he's not he's not trying to hide it he's he's transparent and i think that that makes him a better reference or leader than many others who we may say or we may think are good, but we're not sure. You know, it's the, the devil you know. What was it like on set of the show? I always say, though, there's something, you know, and, and when I was a kid, I always loved watching American movies because I thought there was, there was something about the light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I first went to L.A., I saw it and, and I realized what it was. And it was because... You'd go to LA and, and there was so much humidity in the atmosphere that the light painted the sky differently. And, and, and that both natural and artificial light. So there was something about it that couldn't be replicated here in Europe back then. Spain has something um, that is eerily similar, especially when you're filming on the coast. And when we were filming in Malaga, it was just, it was that, it was that water in the air that you know we were able to paint and then Chris Levasseur, our DP, uh, and and the other Spanish photography people we, we had on the crew were so talented, and they they knew how to make very good use of of a minimal amount of of smoke just to make it all look great. And if you got the background places that we have here in Europe, you know, I mean, these aren't sets; these are the real places. And what I love about those nowadays is that some people they'll 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 make a trip they'll go and as tourists to visit sites that have been on shows they love and it's happened with game of thrones it's even happened with warrior nun and i think it's beautiful Mm -hmm. you know because it shows that you don't only enjoy at home but you know you you don't want to go and see the place where it's been filmed it's it, it it's it's heartwarming because it makes you feel that you know you've reached their hearts in, in other ways than than not just the story or the or the hour in front of the television yeah absolutely do you have any uh memorable moments behind the scenes that really stick out in your head the most whether they were uh emotional or passionate or funny or um do you have any moments to share with the fans um, I, I've always loved the Warrior Nun crew because they all have a very good sense of humor and it was very difficult. I, I, I like to clown around a lot and the more of an extreme character I have, 
I, I write and I write comedy and uh, I usually see the funny side to everything when I'm on set, not when I'm not on set. I become very serious especially <laughs> on the other side of the camera. But when I'm on set and dress like that, I mean, there's just so many ways the scene could go. And uh, I don't know if we ever did any any bloopers. I think I think we have. I think we did. Um, but obviously, I I do remember this this one day. I did this this it, a whole afternoon doing the scene with uh, when when I first appear in the medieval times and the Tarasca behind me and it's chasing me and then I have this huge fight, which then they, they then cut in post-production because they didn't have the money for the VFX to make the whole thing, which is very annoying because I worked my ass off for it and it was so, <laughs> so tiring. So we did that and that was, that was my last day filming. And everybody went out partying that, that same night. <laughs> and, uh, I had a few gin tonics. And the next morning I get a phone call uh, that we had to go back on set and film that whole fight scene because something had happened with the material. I, I wasn't I'm not sure what, but I had to go back, do the whole thing again. And, and I cursed myself for wanting to do my own stunts at that time because the stunt guy they had for me that after, the, after day one, he was always there and sitting there and waiting to do things. But I was like, no, 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 it's fine. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> and that day, he wasn't there anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> I was literally sweating gin. And it was, it was awful. It was awful. But on the upside, I think, you know, the lads, Simon, Simon Winston, Neil, Chris, everybody had a laugh at my expense. So as long as I made someone to... <laughs> You know, I couldn't even imagine that. It, it's, it's always those kind of stories, isn't it? Where when you feel like, you know, you have somebody there to help and support well, I mean, you and you think... Sorry, sorry, because I, 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 I didn't mention the fact that obviously there wasn't a trust there. Yeah. It was it was a guy, it was either a guy in a green suit uh, <laughs> or, or, or a guy with big shiny balls, one green ball and one big shiny ball. So you're actually fighting the air, extremely <laughs> hungover and and not having the time of your life and it's looking ridiculous and you can only hope that then it's going to look amazing which it did yeah. so. which it did it turned out brilliant <laughs> so all well in the end um you know so we, we very much touched on on warrior nun uh in regards to the fans of warrior nun uh, is there anything you kind of want to say to them or um you know feel free to say anything um i you know, I I just like to say thank you for the for the overwhelming support um, to the show and for for pushing as hard as you are to, to get it where it is today. And um, you know, regardless of what happens in the future, uh, I honestly, sincerely say that 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 it's the best fandom that that I've been involved with after one other show, which overwhelmed me too. But this is. I mean, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm sure the rest of the cast and crew are too. And um, to me, it's the best thing that can happen to you because at the end of the day, we're entertainers. The only reason any uh, are doing this job is because we want to tell stories. You can't tell a story unless there's, there's an audience listening. Um, so for me, it only means that We've we've done our job properly, and uh, I just want to say thank you. You know that's awesome, and uh, and like I said, I I I truly believe, regardless of what happens, whether whether we get a season three or or we don't, you know, I I firmly believe that Warrior Nun's going to be a show that the fans are going to be talking about, even in 10, 15 years time, and and people are going to always remember it, and they're always going to want to bring it back. Um, you know, and like I said. I love the show and I'm, I keep my fingers crossed we get a season three. Yeah, no, me too. You know, and, and, and I love the fact that it's, it's such a diverse um, fan base too. And, and such right. a respect, um, you know, I know, I know it's made a lot of people, uh, a certain, um, certain niches of our audience, very happy. Uh, I hate when some people try and use certain, 
certain fan bases to to try and further the 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 attention a show gets and and i'm i'm very proud of our writing team for for having concluded that part of 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 our script the way they did because i didn't want it to be any kind of basing and they they put their hearts into it and they they actually wrote a real story and and christina and albert have done such an amazing job of telling it uh, and it's so honest and it, it's beautiful and then there's so much more for everyone else you know um if you keep something real you don't need to use anything to bring people on board as a fan base just keep things real just tell a good story and and make it for everyone and um and i think there's a clear reflection in our fan base that that's what we've done and i'm very happy and i'm very grateful to everyone who's watching absolutely fantastic um just quickly uh obviously i know um you know we've been going for a little while and i'm not sure i'm sure you're very busy um if we could very just briefly touch on the hundred because again i know uh that is an absolutely colossal show in sci-fi i know it's ended now um, what was it like to be part of season five of the hundred? Well, I, I can't really not talk about the hundred because the only reason I'm on Warrior Nun is because of the hundred. Um, mm -hmm. uh, one of the writers on on the hundred uh, season five uh, saw me working, and they were looking for someone on Warrior Nun to play the villain. And she said, "Well, I've just been working with this guy, and I think you should check him out." And it, and and it all clicked and went ahead. So. So, you know, the hundred is, to me, the hundred is a direct part of what Warrior Nun is. And the only, mm -hmm. uh, when I got on the hundred, it was, it was by coincidence completely. Um, I'd worked with Jason Rothenberg, the, the showrunner and producer on a pilot for Warner Brothers uh, called Searchers in South Africa with both him and Dean White. And that was like a year and a half or two years before I got the call for the hundred. Season five's bad um, was supposed to be and was environmentalistic, um, but uh, she she was she was pregnant when we, when we began, yeah. and uh, obviously production wanted to to make sure that nothing bad was going to happen to her. <laughs> so yeah. so they they were like, well, we got to bring someone in who we can beat up and 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 tire and 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 put through extreme weather conditions and make suffer. <laughs> so for some reason, <laughs> Dean and Jason thought it would be a good idea to, to put me through that. <laughs> so, so they called me and, um, and I, I, I had zero prep time, um, but I, I dove straight into to trying to do something different because i thought if i'm going to do if i'm going to do this show i want to do something different because i i had seen the show i i respected it uh, i respected a lot of actors that, that were working on it and especially because uh i was being given the chance by by jason by dean i didn't want to let them down so i i worked very hard and very little time to 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 prepare something that ended up working very well um not only because of the work I'd done, but I I was surrounded by such a talented team of of young actors. Uh, one who, uh, to me, it just it keeps sticking in my head, and I still have a, a, an amazing relationship with, and who's actually was just on Fakes, uh, Simon's other show, um, Richard Harmon, uh, mm -hmm. Murphy. You know, um, yeah. It, it was one of those times where you actually have a co-star to bounce a ball off that is just, it was fun. It was fun, man. It was fun. And uh, it doesn't happen too often. So, uh, you know, I was lucky to get the 100, and I was lucky to, to get it when I got it. I was lucky to be in season five because it was such a, an amazing group of people. Um, and it, I think it was it was a great season because they, they were able to introduce – a bunch of new actors that came from outer space. <laughs> yeah. Literally, I mean, I know that a lot of people, season five, you know, a lot of those those guys were tired, and uh, I, I think we we brought some new blood in, and um, and we we kind of upped up the energy a bit, you know, and and mm -hmm. tried, you know, to take care of 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 those people who had been holding the torch for. Before seasons already, and you know, it, 
I, it went very well and I made some very good friends uh, while I was on there and I met some incredibly talented people both in front and behind behind the camera yeah you know and as I said with, with the 100 I, I watched it from day one it ever was released in the UK so I followed the show all the way to the end and season by the time we got to season five the show would have become it was very established with the core characters, the core direction it was in. And so I know when we knew with season five, they were going to bring a whole bunch of new characters. Right. And I knew that it, we needed something different, but I was, it was very on edge, whether the fans would recept to that or not, because they're very much, they like their character. They want nothing to happen to their character. Um, and I think with yourself and Ivana as well, I think the work both of you did, on that show that's why to me your performances in that show always stick out in my head the most because that was a time where I I really felt reimbursed and my real love for the show because by the time we got to season four it was very much tethering uh, as you said you could tell the, the the main characters were probably so tired it's such a grueling show I keep hearing about filming it's and very hard to, to keep it fresh and and to yeah. you know to find new leases of life within characters that You've you've been exhausting. You've been using. You know you gotta you gotta give, you gotta give you gotta give a dog a new trick. You know, and it's it's yeah. Because if not, it just gets it it becomes the office. It gets boring. You know, not the office. The show. It becomes the daily <laughs> office. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> back. And, uh, you know, Ivana is such a such a force of nature, uh, both as as a professional. Yeah. And, and as an actress uh, and, uh, and as a person you know i mean she must have been exhausted every day i mean she was she was carrying a, another human being inside <laughs> her, and yet she was able to to be the most energetic uh funny and an amazing human being on set every day um mm -hmm. and and that energy it just it was just you know and as i said i like to kid around a lot and there were a lot of people on those yeah. sets that I had a lot of fun with and and you know Jordan Bolger the other British guy on the show you know he was, yeah. he was great incredible sense awesome. of humor amazingly talented young man and that guy's going places you know I mean he's he's already been on Star Wars he's he's he's, <laughs> he's doing incredibly well and and you know one of the first major shows he got was was 100 and, and I'm always happy yeah. to see people suddenly you know in in all these different universes and I've been like I, I, I work with that guy I work with <laughs> um but but yeah i mean these these i i think i think it was it, we really brought some extra energy on there and and i think we we upped the game because they were like well you know they bring these people they bring these people over from europe <laughs> european actors you know we better behave be on our be on our best game and <laughs> and i think both uh within the show and and outside the show we were able to 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 put a, a bit of an extra spark into it, and you know, I'm 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 very satisfied with, with the work I did on that, and uh, I'm very happy that it brought me to other places, mm -hmm. aka Warrior Nun. <laughs> Absolutely, um, and, and as you've touched as well with both shows, um, how has it been like at maybe a convention where you've had to actually? you know meet fans face to face and how's that experience been for you from either show or any work you've done before i i first experienced what a what a con a con was uh with 100 um i didn't know what to expect uh uh <laughs> i'm i'm not a very public person yeah and and uh, it, I knew it was going to be very aggressive for me. Um, I, you know, I hate. Listen, think about today's world, because I, I don't want to be offensive with people who go to those things, because I think they're awesome. And I go to some myself as as, mm, yeah, as, of course. as an audience. Um, but the thing, the thing about today's world that I hate is when people present themselves in a manner or in a lifestyle or in a in 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 a daily behavior that that isn't real yes my problem with those places is that they i don't know i don't think it's the performers themselves i think 
sometimes it's the management of these places because they want to make the experience so amazing and, and mm -hmm. vital and and cool um they it just sometimes to me it just sells something that isn't real it's like oh you know these these are super famous people that have incredible lives and and you're so lucky to be with them right now and uh right the reason i went to the comic cons was, was uh was a very personal reason and, and i didn't want to present myself in that way uh and especially because some of the eyes and faces of the people that i saw there i could see them looking up to to me or to other people that were, were around me and i didn't feel that i was someone that they should be looking up to you know i'm just a performer um so i kind of turned it around in the way that i could which was well why don't you tell me about your life yeah and i did a few of those like these panels where i was like you know i mean don't trust what you see about any of us any of us here on the you know the, on our social media we don't have those lights we're, we're people like you you know we struggle to get work we 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 struggle like we, we have very unstable lives there's a lot of insecurity uh um you know i have a, a shitload of problems myself my love life my my professional life my everything i i chose to make it a more of a uh an equal space for people to meet and maybe talk about the show and not me uh or, or right. about your own life interests or if you do look up to me or to anybody else here for some reason um may maybe i can say something to you about ex an experience that you're going through that i've been through before and i might be able to mm -hmm. give you some advice about um and not that you have to listen to that advice but at least it'll make you see that you're not alone right see that's another eight-year-old line <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't such a bad guy if you could have maybe you've already had it but if you could have a dream role in any kind of movie or show what would it be <sighs> damn samuel what would it be <laughs> I, you know what, I, I, I don't think I'm going to say a role because I, it's, that would have to be historic, you know, I, I'd have to go for yeah. something to know that exists or has existed or, uh, I've done a lot, I've done a lot of period pieces, I've done sci-fi, I've done, it's more, I'd, I'd make a choice of directors, you know, wow. Um, I, I, I'd like to do something with the Cohen brothers. I was very close to, to being able to do that once, but obviously I wasn't good enough. <laughs> um, um, I'd, I'd love to do something with Quentin Tarantino. I, I just love mm -hmm. the way the story tells, you know, I think he's, he's, I, I think his dialogues, a are, are, are fun man, you know, and, and dialogue is character. You create off dialogue. So, so Absolutely. I'd love it. But the, what I call the creative directors, you know, I, I, Terry Gilliam, I've, I've had the, the immense love to work with. And he's another creative director that, you know, you just want to you want to crack his mind open and see what kind of character you can you can make with him. Um, I, I think, you know, Tim Burton is another one. And uh, and I'd, I'd have to say Guillermo del Toro, you know, these these are the people that that I would like to see myself working with uh, in years mm -hmm. to come. That, that is my aspiration you know the people that 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 have their own vision of the world um their own personal way of seeing life and characters and i've always been one to work i don't look at the script and say how do i make this become me um right. i look at a script and say how do i become what's on there and these are the directors that i'm most interested in at least right now, to, to kind of say, uh, I want you to show me what you have on that page to see what I can do to make that happen. Because those are the challenges for me. Wow. You know, again, some of those directors you listed, they're, you know, they're notorious for having fun and being quirky and different. And, you know, uh, and you have an absolutely great time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the fi finally, um, again, and to be fair, I know you've, you've spoke a lot about it to the people. Um, if you could give people a piece of advice or um, 
you know, whether it's they want to pursue acting or directing or, you know, maybe they want to go and be a forensic scientist or a police officer, you know, um, if you could give people a piece of advice, what would that be? My piece of advice, um, and I, I remember I spoke with my girlfriend uh, not long ago, and well, the reason we're together is because if I take everything that capitalism uh, means to life right now out of the equation, you and I are perfect. I mean, we just love each other. Like the rest is all what what today's world makes us think that we need or we want um but the reality of life is take money out of the equation take material material wants out of the equation and just bring it down to the basics like what do you enjoy doing what do you want to do what makes you happy who do you love don't it's not a question of why it's it's just Take the unnecessary out of the equation. And I know it's difficult because we live in a world that's ruled by, by, yeah. by money and, and materialistic senses. And, and in today's world of social media, even more so. Um, but try and take that all out. And, and what, is, what are you left with? Um, you know, it's not in this life or the next. It is in this life. This is the one we have. And... You won't take whatever you buy in life, whatever you earn in life, uh, money-wise, you're not going to take it with you to the nights. So be happy um, and do something that makes you happy. William, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute honor and pleasure to have you on the show and to talk to you. Thank you, Samuel. And thank you all for watching and, um, and for keeping watching and keep watching.